Hello everyone, welcome to our Elastic Community Channel and welcome to Elasticsearch 101. Today we will be discussing what is Elasticsearch, both from a conceptual perspective as well as defining the core technical parts you need to understand to see how it all works. To start with the definition, Elasticsearch is the distributed search and analytics engine at the heart of the Elastic Stack. It allows you to store your data and index it in a way that enables you to perform fast or near real-time search and analytics. So whether your data is structured or unstructured text, numerical data, geospatial information, or more, the way that Elastic puts it in an index allows you to retrieve it, perform operations for it, search through it in a very, very fast way. This is enabled through the use of REST APIs that allow you to communicate with Elastic and perform these kinds of operations. If you were to relate this to a traditional system, Elasticsearch would take the role of the relational database. It's a place you put your data, you get your data out of, you look through your data and do whatever other operations you need to. However, due to the way that it is uniquely designed, it has quite a few more abilities than a classic system. First of all, Elasticsearch stores its data in form of documents in an index. So rather than having columns and rows in a relational database, that would have all the same structure and all the same properties. Elasticsearch has quite some more flexibility in terms of what properties you know about your data and what would you want to use later on for your analytics and search. This format allows flexibility in how you store your data, creating these key and value pairs that basically define different properties about this document. You then take this document and send it through an HTTP request via the API and make the database give you back a response. To break that down, it means asking your database a question and getting back a response. HTTP requests and APIs are just ways that you can communicate to a piece of technology. You send in something, you get something back. We sometimes call this a contract or a protocol. Imagine a search engine where you're looking something up your query would be the thing that you type in, and the response would be a list of documents. For example, if you look up what is the weather like today, you may find some historical data about weather, or if you're doing this interaction in an application, you would probably just get back a response like 21 degrees and a picture of a sun. And this is how Elasticsearch works as well. We can send a request that says, hey, take this document and put it in my index. Mm, actually, I changed my mind about some details. Can you modify it? No, actually, all of it was wrong. Delete that document. Take all these other documents and send them all to my index. Let me see what you've indexed so far. Well, actually, I just want to see those specific documents that satisfy these conditions. Okay, what about this condition and this other condition? All right, this subset of documents, delete and give me a report about whatever's left in my index. And these are some of the basic commands that you can use to interact with Elasticsearch. And for those who want to see what this looks like in a real environment, we can open our dev tools within the Elasticsearch cloud environment. And here we can run our commands. For example, we can create a new index called weather data. This has been created successfully. So we can now search to see what is in that index. There are no mappings, so we don't know what kind of documents we're going to expect. And we have some information about allocation and shards, which we'll discuss later. When we search here, we also see that there are no hits since there are currently no documents in this index. If we want to add documents, we can use a post command, which will add this document with these two parameters, city and description, which also automatically generates an ID for our document, which we can see over here. If you want to specify the ID yourself, you can use a put command. Therefore, our ID will be zero and we can keep track of this more easily. Now, when we search again, our index will have two documents in it, the ones we've just added. So we have two hits back. We can also update a document based on the index again, using the index zero. We see that the document has been successfully updated with a new description. We can make more complex searches, including a match query. In this case, we're looking for the word rainy in the description, and we get back within 17 seconds, one result. We see the document over here, and it does have the word rainy in the description. 
We can add multiple documents at once with the bulk command. For each of them, we see one row specifying the weather data index that we want to add it to and the body of the document. These have all been successfully added. So if we run this search query again, we now have two results coming back with two descriptions having the word rainy in it. To create a more complex query, we can do the previous match query looking for the word sun in the description and also add a filter with the cutoff date. When we run this, we have two documents that both have the word sun in the description and they both have dates after the 10th of March. We can delete a document based on its index. For example, we can take one of the automatically generated indexes and use it as a parameter without the quotes. And this will delete this document from the index. If we run the search again, we now only have one result since one of them has been deleted. And finally, we can delete our entire index. And if this is done successfully, any kind of search we will run will have an error that the index no longer exists. Now, there are quite a few benefits for working with your data in this way. And one of the keywords we've used in definition were search and analytics. That is the core of what Elasticsearch has been built to do. You're able to retrieve your data in a very fast way because Elasticsearch is based on Apache Lucy. This means that Elasticsearch natively supports operations like full text search, which include automatically performing things like stemming, synonym matching, similarity scores, and prioritizing results, all of these coming out of the box, which means that Elasticsearch is a great solution for any kind of text search applications. Another thing I mentioned in the definition was the word distributed. This is another key capability of Elastic due to the way that it works with a node architecture. It can scale horizontally and vertically whenever you need to increase throughput or size, allowing you to scale your applications with ease without having to make a lot of changes or redesign your whole approach. Another thing mentioned in the definition was near real time performance. And that is another very important part of how Elasticsearch works. When you're looking something up, think of browsing a website or looking for an answer, you want that result instantaneously. Elasticsearch is designed to work that way due to the way that it stores the data and indexes and does some extra magic behind the scenes to make it that retrieval is as fast and precise as possible. And when you're performing these fast searches, you also have a lot of flexibility in how you define your queries and your data. And that is just the foundation of Elasticsearch. There are also a lot of other features that are specialized and designed to perform different kinds of operations, such as semantic search with the underlying vector database configurations. You can do different types of analytics. You can uh, monitor the activity of various systems that you integrate, look for anomalies with the machine learning components, find security threats, aggregate data in a lot of complex ways, create visualizations, find bottlenecks, and much more. And all that being said, while Elasticsearch is an amazing search engine, and the search engine part is quite easy to visualize due to how we use the internet today, you can look at search as the solution to a lot of other kinds of problems. It is a great way of going through data and finding relevant information, which needs to be fast and flexible and scalable, like Elasticsearch. Any kind of problem in which you need to store, manage, and look through your data is a search problem. And Elasticsearch is one of the best solutions. And finally, we're getting to the next question in our session today. What is the ELK stack? ELK or Really, ELK stands for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, which are actually three solutions provided by Elastic. They work together really well, and most users that use Elasticsearch will also use especially Kibana, but also Logstash. Logstash allows you to connect to various data sources with its out-of-the-box connectors, allowing you to bring data into Elastic either as a one-time batch job or through data streams that allow you to bring data in in real time. And Kibana allows you to visualize your data. It is a web-based UI where you can look at the data in your indexes, perform some quick searches with the native languages, 
create dashboards and other kinds of visualizations and basically take a look at what is going on in your search engine. And because ELK spells elk, this is our lovely mascot, the Elkie, which you will see with us at most conferences where Elastic is present. Now, Elastic actually provides a variety of other services as well. They just did not all fit in the acronym. However, they also support the way that you would perform your data operations. There are things like Beats, APM, our fleet service, and security tools, and much more. But for the focus of this series, we will now just talk about Elasticsearch. And there you have it. Hope this gave you a quick introduction of the concepts we'll talk about from now on, especially when we get to the hands-on part. Next up, we'll show you how to install Elasticsearch and get started so you can explore all of this for yourself. See you in the next episode.